Uh, earlier today, I talked with ESPN play-by-play Dave Fleming, who's on the call for BYU at Arizona. Fun conversation. Here it is. Dave, it was fun to have week zero last week, but it didn't really satisfy me, honestly. Uh, Nebraska and Illinois. Now we have all the games, the full gauntlet. It's going to be fun. Uh, what's life like now that we're back into college football season for you? I can't believe Nebraska, Illinois didn't scratch your itch for college football. I'm shocked. Uh, it, life is great. I mean, I can't wait for the season to start. I really am uh, excited. Uh, I think it's had a chance to be a really fun college football season. Yeah, we, we, none of us really know much of anything, although I do think the Nebraska, Illinois game at least gives you a tiny bit of insight into hey, it, it can be unpredictable. Maybe you know, our expectation levels don't match the teams we see on the field. This year in college football, just sort of big picture, you, know, you kind of hear the same names, teams toward the top. But I, you know, I look at the rosters of those great teams and powerhouse programs and think, huh, I don't know, there's a chance that those teams aren't quite as good this year. There's a chance that we have some upstarts around the country. So, you know, big picture wise, I can't wait to get the games going and sort of see what we got. You're on the call for BYU in Arizona. This is an interesting one because these two teams have played season openers over the years. There's some players left over because it's BYU from 2016 that played in that game, namely Jake Oldroyd, the kicker, had the game-winning kick, and so on. You got to see BYU a couple times last year, Dave. So what are your initial thoughts on the Cougars going into 2021? Yeah, my thoughts are probably the same as everybody else. You know, it's just a giant question of what will this team look like without Zach Wilson under center? And uh, I don't know the answer to that, although I do believe that BYU has got a lot of talent spread across the roster. This is a good, experienced, big, fast team. Uh, So I, I expect BYU to have a really good year. But that said, I mean, it it is very fair to ask what is the team going to look like without Zach? Because, I mean, I had a front row seat early in the year. (laughs) I'm not taking any credit for it, but I do feel like we sort of our crew kind of got Zach on the radar because we had him early and he just looked so great. And I, you know, I kept looking around the room when we were doing these games like, uh, hello, every, are we, are, are we realizing what we're watching with this guy? This isn't just a kid putting up good numbers. This is a kid playing at a super high level, making plays that are not normal for this uh, level of football. And he, he, you know, he went on to finish the year with a, a great flourish and got drafted number two overall, which at the beginning of last year, of course, nobody would have expected. And now in training camp, all I hear are reports about, man, the Jets got the right guy. This guy's got a chance to be a star in the NFL. So when you lose a guy like that in college football, it's not a death knell. It doesn't mean you're not going to be a good team, but it does mean you got to figure out who's going to plug that hole. And and we'll see if BYU can do it. My bet is that they actually can. I don't think they'll be as spectacular offensively as they were last year, but I think they'll be really good. Yeah, the combination of uh, new guy meets harder schedule. Hey, that's going to be tough for one Jaron Hall, right? So we'll see what he does in just his third start uh, as a BYU Cougar. So when you look at Arizona on the other side, obviously a team that made a coaching change. Jed Fish comes in from the Patriots. Uh, got a couple of freshmen starting quarterbacks. Arizona, not not expected to be world beaters quite yet, uh, but what do you think of the Wildcats so far? They haven't won a game in 700 days. I mean, that's, you know, when we kick off on Saturday, I think it'll be exactly 700 days since they've won a game. Um, you know, that that is a long time for a fan base to be without a win. Uh, I think, you know, Arizona may be the most mysterious team in terms of what we're going to see of anybody in college football. Uh, you know, not just because of the new coaching staff, but because it's a new coaching staff that wants to install a totally different system where the personnel that was in place, you know, might not really match what that system uh, is. And they want to run tight ends. They want to have a fullback. Uh, Arizona might not have any of those on their roster. If they do, they're not proven players. They do have some skill players. You know, I think they do have some talent. Arizona does. My guess is, is that the transition is going to be a rough one just to get uh, the pieces in place to play the kind of football that fish wants to play. That said, you know, (laughs) you've, you've been a fan of college football. You, you know, it happens with every single program. Whenever a new regime takes over, 
you know, you hear the same cliches. We're going to play fun football and we're going to play up tempo or we're going to, you know, recruit the heck out of this thing or we're going to bring fun back to the program. All the things you hear from every single coach who takes over in this instance, it actually seems like there's some uh, grounding behind uh, all that talk. They have been much more enthusiastic. The players have about what's going on around there. I expect that on Saturday, Arizona is going to come out and play hard and who knows how far that can get them. But I think it's going to be a team and a roster that is going to look like a group that's having more fun playing football. And I, that does make a big difference. And so I expect that BYU is going to have to match that intensity. Yeah. Maybe that like when, when someone has a baby, there's like dad strength. Maybe there's like new coach strength. <laughs> that first game, Brett Bielma, at Illinois, you know, we saw it uh, over the weekend. Maybe that's the thing. I don't know. I want to go back to what you were talking about with Zach Wilson because I was watching a little bit of the Louisiana Tech game last night for uh, a package we're doing this week, and you were on the call for that one, and Zach goes 24-26, has two passing touchdowns, three rushing touchdowns. That was one of the first moments where I was like, whoa, this guy's taking the leap, right? Um, and the efficiency was just crazy. So uh, you, you saw BYU a couple times last year. You're doing it remote. Obviously, you're the, uh, you know, one of the voices of the Giants, which is incredible. What, a, what an incredible year, by the way, for the Giants playing the Brewers today. Catch you on the call. Um, yeah, <laughs> the, yeah it's, it's going to be a busy week. Are you in person this Saturday, or will you still be remote? I am. Now, I'm going to come in on the day of the game, which I almost never do, uh, just because it's baseball season, because with the Giants, we got a packed schedule, and it's a Dodgers weekend. And mm. so I'm going to stay in San, I'm going to stay in San Francisco on Friday, call a game that night. Then, you know, it's close to home, Las Vegas is. So I'll get on a plane. It's a night game. Uh, Saturday morning. So it's going to be a quick trip for me, but I will be in person, uh, which, you know, I, I, looking back on last year, we pulled it off and it wasn't ideal, but in the middle of a true pandemic, I mean, I think it was pretty remarkable. The fact that ESPN and others pulled off uh, the ability to call games from wherever we were the one, you know, truly the one thing about last year that I would have liked to have had back was the chance to see Zach Wilson play in person because Zach was just remarkable. And uh, well, I had a chance to talk to him a bunch of times for our Zoom meetings and I found him to be really personable. And I would have liked to have, to have seen him play a little more up close. Uh, he is something else. And I, I, I that game that you mentioned, uh, I, I thought the same thing uh, because it wasn't just, it wasn't just that he was putting up efficient numbers. It was the way he was doing it. It was, it was NFL throws and then some. It was plays that could translate to the next level. And I, I think he's going to be a really good NFL quarterback. We're hoping for it, too. We just hope he overcomes the Jets. Uh, could you beat, since it's a Dodgers-Giants weekend, uh, this, this weekend, could you beat Joe Davis in an arm wrestling contest? <laughs> Joe's Joe's ten years younger than me now. My dad's strength may have faded. He's got he's got young kids now, so maybe I'll take him out to the golf course, see if I can beat him. There, there. you go. I'd have to do a few push ups. I have to do do a few push ups to get ready. Yeah. Hey, uh, it makes sense. Any other storylines you're watching going into the week of preparation for BYU in Arizona and Las Vegas? Well, I do think that out West, you know, college football out West, it's been a rocky few years, frankly. And, you know, for, for not just the PAC 12, but the mountain West for BYU um, it, it's a year. I, I think it's an important year. It's an important year to kind of get a foothold back again among the elite. And I, there's been some coaching stability at some of the bigger programs, uh, there's been some talent influx, I think, at some of those same programs. So for Washington, for Oregon, for USC, even UCLA, they, you know, I think the Bruins look pretty good. Maybe they have a chance to take a step forward. Uh, you know, the Pac-12 doesn't want to get left behind. Uh, I actually think BYU, you know, BYU has a chance to have another really good year and be a, a you know, a, a team that is sort of a factor in the national conversation. Um, far too often lately that hasn't happened out West. And, you know, at some point you have a lot of ground to make up. Maybe you start to think it's too much ground to make up. I mean, it's been a few years. The West coast college football needs to get its act together. And, uh, it's been a variety of factors that have led to the fact that a lot of those teams haven't been a contender. So for me, early season storylines, what am I looking for? Uh, I mean, I am looking for 
some really solid performances from some of those Pac-12 schools. And they have tough matchups early in the season, not just week one, week one, two, three. But that also means they have some opportunities. When's the last time a, a, a West Coast football team had a big non-conference win? You know, it's probably been a while. Uh, this would be a year to get one, I think. Agreed. I grew up on the West Coast before moving to Utah and uh, Pac-10 fan. Uh, yeah, if USC is not dominant or Oregon or I guess Washington a couple years ago, we got blown out by Alabama. Yeah, what's the relevance, right? And then uh, this will certainly be a talking point, I'd imagine, during the game uh, this Saturday is the Big 12 rumors regarding BYU. Obviously, that's something BYU's wanted for a while. How desperate will the Big 12 be? Uh, Texas and Oklahoma go to the SEC. Some dominoes fall, or so we think, but nothing's really shaken out quite yet. So we'll kind of see what happens with BYU and the Big 12. Yeah, I mean, I think the best argument that BYU can make is just to play good football again. You know, the, everybody's memory is fresh with Zach Wilson and the NFL draft and 11 wins. Uh, and they, as you mentioned earlier, they have the schedule this year where they have some opportunities to impress. And if they can do that, I think that's how you make your argument. Uh, you know, because the other pieces are in place for BYU uh, to be in a big conference because, you know, they have a great fan base. When we put games on ESPN, we get good audiences because people like watching BYU. It's a great fan base. It's a great tradition. Um, you know, I hope one other thing about the Cougars this year that I hope, because I like it when coaches change over time. And I think Sataki changed last year. You know, BYU is the program of Lavelle Edwards. BYU is a program that has built its history on exciting offensive football. And I know that you've got access to big kids and strong kids. And so it does make sense to build your program in some ways around the lines on both sides, which I think is what Kalani really likes to do. He wants a big, strong, tough team. But last year, and you don't have Jeff Grimes this year, but last year, and maybe a little bit the year before, but especially last year, you know, it finally, to me, looked like what BYU football is supposed to look like after a bunch of years where it didn't look like that. And I'm a big believer in, in college football. Your history, your program's history, your identity is all so closely linked. I hope we see that again from BYU this year, even without Zach Wilson. I hope we see a team that looks fun, that's playing a brand of football that you want to watch. Uh, because I thought that was a great part of, of last season for, for BYU. Amen to that. Steve Young has said that for years on this program. Even, hey, BYU, this is what we do. We throw the football. Let's go. And Aaron Roderick, who primarily took over as, as the primary plane caller midway through 2019 into 2020, he's back, which is great. That continuity hopefully will yeah. uh, mean big things. Dave, we appreciate the time. Uh, of course, people can catch you on the call. Giants uh, hosting the Brewers tonight. And, of course, Saturday, BYU in Arizona. We look forward to it. <laughs> Me too. I can't wait to get the season started. And then uh, I, you know, I don't know that if this is going to uh, upset anybody, I don't think I'm breaking any news, but I'll be in uh, Provo for week two also. So All I right. get uh, the Cougars well, you and back Utah. to back uh, weeks. Yes. Okay. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, Dave, we appreciate <laughs> the time, man. You're welcome. Thanks. Dave Fleming, week one and two play-by-play -play on ESPN for BYU's football games. Let's go.